For centuries, humans have tried to scratch that one spot on their back. Despite trying everything, that area has remained out of reach. Until now. I have this small spot on my back that gets itchy, and it's the one spot that I cannot reach. So I made this crappy back scratcher out of a piece of scrap plywood, stuck some screws in the end of it, and some foam and tape for a handle, and it works, but the handle's starting to break. So I was gonna cover it with carbon fiber to make it stronger and last longer. Why would I rebuild this piece of junk when I could make a really awesome back scratcher? So I custom designed my very own drastically over-engineered back scratcher, and I have already printed out all of the parts, and you can too but we'll talk about that later. Start simple and assemble the arm that had to get printed in pieces because the whole thing wouldn't fit on my crack. I know somebody's gonna go, why'd you print that thing with a potato? Because it doesn't look very good. I ran my printer to almost three times as fast as it's meant to be run so that I could print these out real quick because I was way behind schedule. I like to put arming switches on my projects, which is what this is going to be. I need one more hole for the battery wire. Yeah, melt real nice like that. What's the point of having an arming switch if you don't have an indicator light to let you know that it's armed? I modeled this hole and thought it would be big enough, but it's actually kind of uncomfortable to get my hand in there and hold it. So I'm just gonna bend it out to match that curve right there with a little bit of heat. So much better. Now those two wires go to the part that's really cool. Here's the hand. I have all of my finger pieces organized in bags. They're gonna be held together by strips of spring steel, and that spring steel will be locked in place with little grub screws that I have holes modeled for. And then string will be threaded through everything and pulled on by servos that go in those locations. And that'll make the fingers do scratchy motions. From what I've seen most of the time when people make robotic hands, there's positive control in both directions for the fingers, but there's an easier, much simpler way to do this. You don't have a whole lot of strength when you try to open your fingers versus close them, so the servos are just gonna close them. And I'll rely on the spring steel to make them spring back open again. These spring steel strips from a wiper blade are what is gonna get used for the fingers. You used to be able to pull this rubber part out of a wiper blade and get a replacement for really cheap put the strips back in and install it back in the blade. And then you could reuse this thing over and over and over until this rusted to nothing. But now people just replace the whole thing and you can't even find this for sale anymore. So I'm gonna use these and repurpose them to be the springy parts for my fingers because they are a really nice spring steel. Thumbs up. Hi. <laughs> There's my hand.
this is a servo, it's gonna move the fingers. I could do something overly fancy and run a microcontroller to tell these where to go and make the fingers do all kinds of fancy stuff, but it would be easier and faster for me at least to just take them apart pull the board out and then wire directly to the motor so that whenever the thing gets power, it just spins indefinitely and makes the fingers move. And I need to notch the bottom so that the wires don't come out the side, they can come out the bottom and then swing back to the side so that I can stick the servo down in real easily. <laughs> well, one of them's working. <laughs> Might need to pre-bend the springs a little bit, unless I just broke all the servos. Yeah, I may have stripped the gears out of some of the servos. <laughs> it's the next day. It's all fixed and it works great. I'm the one that screwed it up. I bumped the trigger to make a move to get them to the right location and I hadn't trimmed the horns yet. They ran into each other, stripped all the gears out. Four of the five needed gear sets replaced and I reversed the polarity on two of the motors so that they move past each other instead of whacking into each other. And I'm really excited this works because this project is awesome for a lot of reasons. And the one that I'm actually the most excited about is that I have an online store now at jerisaval.com and I'm selling the 3D files from this so that you can make your own. Come with a parts list and a little bit of instructions to help you out with anything. And I have a new shirt for sale over there. There's gonna be so much cool stuff from my projects that goes on the store. Link's in the description. Finally get to use this for the first time. My back is so itchy. Oh yeah. Oh, that's actually really good. Right, right there. Oh, it's so good. You probably noticed earlier in the video that the fingertips screw on. I can swap them out for different tips. These are the standard fingertips, but if you like somebody scratching your back that has fingernails, these are the claws. Check out this scratch in action. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> but that's not all. You've got your standard tips, you've got your claw tips for extra scratching, but these have holes in them so that you can install whatever you want. Now you can use this thing to fix your car. Choose from a variety of nails and screws, brush your teeth, exacto knife. You can obviously do all kinds of stuff with this, but I think I found the ultimate modification and it might be a little bit of nightmare fuel too. And I call this version Edward Needle Hands. <laughs> <laughs> Ah. But hear me out, because I can actually use this for a whole bunch of stuff. And the reason I have these needles is because I use them to glue stuff together. And now I can do five at once. And as long as I'm careful, I can still scratch my back with it. Plus, if five people are close together, I can give five injections at once. Or five at once on one person. Come here. Time for your shots. This back scratcher might be one of my best inventions. And remember, if you want your own, go to jerisval.com where you can get the files and you can even turn it into your own little personal Edward Needle Hands. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time.